the constitution of casually competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. We the Duelists hold this belief to be self-evident. All metagame and related content hold supreme, while accompanied by casual content for our viewers' explicit satisfaction. Hey guys, it's Sly here from Casually Competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! and I'm here with who? Oh hi, I'm Exiled. So uh, today we're going to be bringing you an update on my uh, Paleozoic deck profile. Um, it's been a while, but uh, this deck is actually a lot better than it used to be, I think. It's a lot more adapted to being able to play against all decks, and like the um, whatever, the horrible matchup, the uh, Trudeco matchup, is actually playable now, so yeah. Um, let's have some fun. Exactly, yeah, that is the best part of this. So let's get into the main deck. First I'm playing um, three copies of Swap Frog, three copies of Dupe Frog, and two Rodentons. Uh, Frog Engine, what can I say? It's what you need. Then we're playing Hand Traps now. We're playing two Ash Blossoms, mainly because I own two. Uh, three Ghost Diggers, and then three Effect Veilers. Um, I would say, if you can, I'd say cut Veiler to two, and then th throw in the third Ash, but, you know, yeah. When you don't have three Ashes. Plus, I'm suspecting it's going to get hit, so if that's not the case, play what I'm playing. Um, then, moving on to the next part, we got two Blue Boys, one Spellbook of Secrets, and one Spellbook of Knowledge. A uh, cool interaction with Blue Boy is that you're actually able to use him with Swap Frog, and make Toads, so if you actually draw into Secrets or uh, Blue Boy with a Swap Frog, you have a Toad first turn, which is what you should do. Because you can also add back the uh, Blue Boy off of Toad if you wanted to later. Um, then for the final spell, playing one Monster Reborn, because uh, Exiled convinced me, didn't you? Yes, I did. I feel super proud about that fact. Yeah, so basically, I realized that it's first off, it is really good, because if, if you can, you can add back um, our Special Summon... Uh, masterpiece off of this, which gives you a really big body, which makes it easier to kill that matchup. Um, plus, if you open Swap Frog with this, that is actually a Toad as well, so it's a little bit more access to Toad, which is nice. Then moving into the Paleozoic Monsters, we're playing two Canadia, or I'm playing, um, two Canadia, two Dynamiscus, and then three Olenoides. I personally prefer Canadia, prefer Canadia over Dynamiscus. However, true Dracos suck, and they don't play many monsters, and this can hit Diagram, hence why it's split two. So yeah. Olenoides is the best one, just so you know. Uh, then we're playing the best three I've ever. Reckless, not really the best. It's just kind of playing it because you kind of have to. Um, this is set out against every single matchup. Yeah, absolutely every single matchup, except for maybe not one, just because, you know, it depends on if you want to or not. Um, then one warning, and then three strikes, and judgment, because you get one warning, three strikes, and then judgment is cast upon you. Um, these are amazing because, first off, judgment and warning can stop Masterpiece, and they're all they are all amazing against any other matchup, basically. For the final four cards, we're playing, um, or I'm playing, again, one Impaler Order, and then three Anti Spells. These are godly, we could say, because they just, like, you flip this on most opponents, and they kind of just, what they would have been able to do turn one, they can do now turn seven. Um, it's nice. <laughs> Floodgates are powerful, and yes. I, I fear that Anti Spell might be hit on the ban list, but until then, let's we'll just enjoy it while we have it. Yeah, I, I want it to stay. Dude, that was, that was the first, uh, it was the first side deck card I ever invested in, so, you know, I've been playing it for about two years now, I think. Um, then, free extra deck. So, playing one copy of Deco Docker because it's the main deck out to Masterpiece, plus it's just good sometimes. Then we're playing two copies of Miss Starboy. Because double Miss Starpoid plus double Miss Starpoid plus Toad is eight thousand damage, therefore game. Or I think it's eight thousand. Somewhere close to that if it's not exactly eight thousand. Um, then we're playing one Proxy Dragon because um, I'm never going to give up on that one OTK combo that I found a while back. And yeah, that, that's about the only reason why. Um, then three of the always go into, which is Toad, because you know you just if you can go into Toad, you go into Toad. That's just how it works basically. Because you know, yeah. Then one o Animal Caris and one Opabinia because. Animal Caris is amazing. Opabinia can actually extend plays, so if you ever have like a um, a Mistar Boy on, on board, or not even, if you have a Paleozoic card in your hand and then you can summon this guy, you can search another one and get a plus one off of it, which is nice, um, using the cards in the graveyard. Well, getting a plus one on board, it's not really a plus one, but it's it enhances your board presence, which is nice. Um, then one Cat Shark and one Degusto Phoenix, because it's part of the OTK combo. It's not very... like It only comes up when you're doing the OTK combo with... Um, Proxy Dragon, uh, or it's not protected unless you have that combo. Then for the random ones, we got one cursed, uh, one Sky Cavalry Centauria, one uh, Crumble Logos, and then one Cursed Javelin. What I was about to say, Cursed Javelin is amazing. Uh, the other two can out certain things, so that's why you play them. Then, what is the best card in this entire deck? People ask. People always ask that question. Of course, it's Dante. Um, 
So because Burning Vist was my first deck, I chose to throw this one in here because I had an extra open spot. But if you're playing this smartly, uh, you should throw in Link Spider. Uh, hilariously enough, I actually do not own a Link Spider. I sold my only copy off. Um, so once I get one, this will be removed for it, or maybe not. Who knows, right? The reason why Link Spider is because of the new Lair of Darkness structure deck field spell. It's most because of that, or if you're like for if you're forced given token, you can just give the token for either Proxy Dragon or Link Spider. Yeah, exactly. Um, then moving on to the side deck of Beauty. So we're playing two Gamma Seals because Gamma Seals nice. It can out Draco and it can out Vortex technically, but I don't side against them. Um, maybe I should, but who knows? Then two Mask of Shirked, uh two Magic Deflector. These are all in here for the Draco matchup because they're just amazing. Magic Deflector is basically like D-Barrier against um, uh, uh, Trudeco, because you flip it, and then they can't play any of their spell cards, really. Um, so it's powerful. Let's just put it at that. Um, Rest in peace to their card demise. Their card demise can be played, though. They, they can play that. They can? Yeah, oh. th that they can, but, you know, they can't oh, play anything only, they draw off oh, of it. It's so. only equip, field, continuous, or quick play. Okay, never mind. It's basically everything except for normal spells. So, yeah. Okay, so rip the diagram, then. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then uh, we're playing three Heavy Storm Duster. This card is actually really amazing. It's both um, True Dracos, because of course it's a plus one, or it's a neg one for them. Um, and then for... or You lose one card, they use, lose two cards, therefore it's nice. Just put it simply like that. It's also good against Pendulum Magicians, because you hit their scales, so they lose resources by doing that, which is nice. Um, and it's good against a lot of other decks, too. Um, just in a random assortment. Then, 3D Barrier. Basically, this card is godly against every single deck, except for True Draco. Um, it's not actually true, but every other deck that it's not truly godly against, you have a good enough matchup against them anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you were playing a dead guard, but True Draco does. So, you're not playing in that main for the, that specific reason, and it, this is a one, one card stop for um, uh, a lot of decks. A lot of decks. Then for the final three of, we're playing three Mirror Force. So I used to be playing Storming, actually, in my main deck, as I think you guys will remember. Um, however, there was one reason why I chose Mirror Force instead of Storming Mirror Force on the side, Mech Knights. So if you hit Mech Knights um, and they attack you, you flip Storming and then you just bounce the Mech Knights back to your hand. So next turn they just summon them back out. So it's kind of pointless, you know? Um, unless you can kill them in that turn, it doesn't matter. And really this is only bad, I'd say, in the case of like, um, what was it? What deck is it? Um, Lightsworn Zombies. They, they, they still have the ability to play through it, but you don't need to side this against them, honestly. I think you're, you're, you're pretty much okay with the, the massive amount of hand traps in deck. I will say, though, for this side, I would want to change a few things. Um, the Mirror Forces are one of them, because it's only really optimal, I believe, in one matchup in the side. Uh, I would side those, and then potentially even the Gamma Seals out for uh, Mask of uh, Mask of Restricts. I already have Mask of Restricts. For um, Evenly Matched, and then potentially Regeki. It's, the Regeki's a little bit more up in the... Uh, I don't know yet, because it's drawing into too many cards that are good for going first, if you or going second if you go first, can be bad for you with this deck, so, you know... That's worth questionable, but what I've been thinking about doing is cutting Mirror Force for evenly matched, and then maybe these two for like either maybe the uh, third Mask of Restrict and then the third um uh, whatever it's called uh, Magic Deflector. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, hope you enjoy. Uh, if you liked the video, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and if you really liked it, subscribe because you know Yu-Gi-Oh is fun.